Well, good morning, Rock Church, and welcome to all of you today, and I know more of you will be joining in shortly, but we're thankful to the Lord for you all, able that you're able to be with us this Sunday morning, enjoy a good time of fellowship here at Urban Crest Apartments. We're enjoying this fellowship. We broke bread together. We're about to pray together, and then we're going to get into the word of the Lord together, and we are thankful to the Lord for all of his goodness and grace. Amen. Amen. So today, let me just make a couple of announcements very quickly so that we can keep this before you. Uh, we, we announced it last Sunday that we are going back to a more of a normal schedule beginning in January. So beginning the first Sunday in January and then every Sunday after that, we will, we will, the whole group will be meeting in the war room on Sunday mornings. The care groups then will switch to Wednesday night. And they will be here at Urban Crest. They will be in Richwood with Sister Shirley's group. And then there will always be a group there at the building on Main Street in Clute. That's 540 South Main. We'll be sending this out in greater detail. But just to keep it before you, December will still be the normal schedule that we are on right now. The first Sunday in December, we'll all be together. We'll enjoy a great Christmas dinner on that first Sunday of December. And then we will... Um, go go to our care groups the rest of the the rest of the month and then in January the schedule changes so just keep that in mind and like I said we'll give you further details on this as we go forward today we have some great news some great praise reports we also have some prayer requests we're going to bring but we need to give God all the glory and the praise for Sister Vicki Sharp uh, God is doing a great work in her body. Um, she has come out of surgery and she is recovering very well, very quickly, and will possibly be able to come home very, very soon. And we give God all the praise for that. Amen. A very Amen. delicate surgery in her neck, but God was with the surgeon and we give God all the praise for that. Amen. Amen. We do need to pray for a couple of needs this morning. We need to pray for Sister Loretta's brother, David. Um, um, still don't have a diagnosis yet on everything that has happened to him, but he was with us last Sunday in service. We know that God has his hand on him and intends to restore David, not only physically and mentally, but also spiritually to the things of God. And we're looking forward to that. Amen. And so we want to pray for David today. We need to pray for, um, for brother Ed Perez. We need to lift up brother Juan and sister Julie. And I know that there are other requests today that I'm not I don't remember all of them, but I know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think, right? God is faithful and just to his word. He cannot go back on his word. He can't change his word. He is the same always. And so that's what we're going to pray and that's how we're going to believe. So if you would join with me wherever you are watching, if you're watching now or even if you're watching after this is archived, you can still pray along because the word of God, the spirit of God does not change just because this is not live anymore. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the power and the privilege of prayer. You've called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. You've given us the power of truth. You've put your spirit within us. And so now, Lord, we have this connection with you that when we pray, we pray in the Holy Ghost. We pray in English. We, we pray, oh Lord, with power and with authority. We pray, oh Lord, with confidence that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. So today, in Jesus' name, we lift up these special requests, but not without thanksgiving. God, we thank you for what you have done for Vicki. We believe, Lord, it was your hand upon the surgeon that caused this surgery to be such a success. Talented, gifted, all of the right instruments, of course, but the hand of the Lord was behind it all the way. And God, we give all the glory to you. God, today we lift up David. We have no idea what all has happened in his body. But we believe, Lord, that even now, if you are willing, you could heal him today. But, Lord, there may be a process that you're working, trying to do in his life. And so we give you the freedom to do that, Father. Not our will, but yours be done in how you heal and when you heal. And the, your ability to restore him, Lord, we trust that today. And, God, we lift up Ed today. You know exactly, oh, Lord, the diagnosis 
God, the, the pancreatic cancer, oh Lord, and how it has caused him to be sick for so long. But we trust, Lord, again, if you are willing, you could do it right now. You could take all of the cancer from his body, even at this very hour. But again, Lord, you've got a process in mind. You've got a will, and we want to submit to that will today in Jesus' name. And God, every other request and petition that we could think of today, Brother Juan and Sister Julie, God, you know everything. You know about the needs that are in this room and those watching online and those that will watch in the future. And Lord, that same spirit that is in this room now will be with this video in the future. And we believe, Father, that you will do this. And so now as we open our hearts to your word, speak to us. Talk to our hearts. Give us the wisdom and the understanding we need, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, that indeed today we may hear and receive what the spirit will say unto the church. We pray these things in Jesus' name, giving all glory and honor unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. So if you want to use your electronic device or if you have your Bible, turn to the book of First. Corinthians. First Corinthians. That's the New Testament. It's it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then it Acts and Romans, and then First Corinthians. We're gonna start reading in chapter two. But while you're finding that, let me just take a moment here and comment about what we're about to read. Well, let me, let me give you what the subject is. The subject is Jesus, Lord of our minds. Y'all remember last Sunday or the Sunday, the last Sunday that we were here. We talked about the fact that Jesus is Lord of all. He is Lord of heaven and earth. He said it himself in Matthew chapter 28, just before he gave or in his words to his disciples, what we call the great commission. When he said, go ye into all the world. Before he said, go ye into all the world, he said, behold, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Therefore, go ye and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I, I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. He said that because he had power to give them to go do those things. Behold, all power in heaven and in earth is given to me. That's what Jesus said. So when he gave us that commission to go, he is, he is all, he's in essence, he's speaking prophetically because at the moment that was written, the Holy Ghost was not yet given. He, he hadn't, he had already gone to the cross. He had already been buried and rose again, but he had not yet ascended to the father, which he said that after he ascended to the father, then he would send back the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. So we know that part hasn't happened yet. So he's speaking prophetically. So in giving them this commission, he's telling them in so many words that in, in a few more days, you're going to be endued with power from on high. John records those words. He said, go ye to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the father, which saith he, you have heard of me. He said, you shall be endued with power from on high. And he gave them, he gave them the understanding that this was the comforter or actually I take that back. It was Luke that recorded the book of Acts. Luke said that in Acts chapter one. But we know that Jesus words that John recorded in John chapter 14 said that Jesus would come to us in the form of the comforter. So all of these things are have already been put into motion. They just haven't happened yet, at least from the context of what I just quoted to you from Matthew 28. But Jesus, the point I want to make to you today is that Jesus is Lord of all. OK. Jesus is Lord of all. And so the lesson last the last time we studied together was that he is Lord of heaven and earth. But is he? my Lord? Does he have freedom in my life to tell me whatever he wants to tell me? Does he have the freedom to dictate my life? Yes, he does. And that is something we all have to answer. We have to answer that question. And if we don't answer the question, we answer it anyway. Mm -hmm. 
If I don't say in the affirmative that he is my Lord, then automatically there is no middle of the road. There is no gray area. There is no um, maybe. It is either or. He is either your Lord or he is not. And if you choose to not choose, you choose in not choosing. Does that make sense? So the lesson last week was setting us up for what is about to come over the next eight weeks. Yes, he's Lord of all, but is he my Lord? Can I say today that Jesus is my Lord? Would he say of me that he is my Lord? I mean, that would be more succinct, right? That would get it right down to the point of where we live. I mean, I can say he is, but if I still get up every day and run my own life and do my own thing, then he's not my Lord, right? That means every single day when I get up in the morning, I, I got to remember to look at the camera every now and then. Um, <laughs> I do have an audience in the room for those of you watching online. Um, every single day that I get up and, and before I do anything else, it's find out what his will is for today and know that will. Let it become part of who I am and then go do his will. Regardless of what that is. And sometimes we we shy away from that because we don't know what what that's going to mean for us. We think he's going to put us on the spot. We think that God's going to throw us out in the middle of a den of lions and we're going to have to perform. We need to get away from that mentality. We need to forget what we think about the will of God and find out what he thinks about the will of God. And then let him rule and reign in my life and let him decide where he's going to place me and how he's going to use me. Because as an, if I can figure it out in my mind, guess what? That's not the will of God. If I can figure it out, if I can sort through it and I can line it all out, line up on line here a little or line up on line and say, OK, this is what the will of God is going to be today. Well, then it's not his will. Because that would take faith completely out of the equation. And we know that the just, according to the scriptures, shall live by faith. So what does that mean to us? That means that Jesus has to be Lord of us, Lord of every part of our life, so that we can walk by faith. He's made it possible for us. He's actually, he's made it impossible for us to live according to his will by any other means, it's impossible, <clears throat> excuse me, it's impossible to please God when we are living according to our own will and our own way. Everybody knows what Hebrews chapter 11 says about the faithful. But do you know what it says about Enoch, the man who God took before the flood of Noah? God raptured Enoch before the flood, that way back into in the Old Testament, all the way back to the book of Genesis. And why, why did God take Enoch? Because he had this testimony that he what? Pleased God. And how did he please God? Because the very next verse, Hebrews eleven six 6 says, um, for he had this testimony that he pleased God. Then it says, but without faith, somebody finish it for me. It is impossible. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But that was Enoch's testimony that he pleased God. Are y'all with me so far? Well, we're still talking about Jesus, Lord of our minds. We're getting there. But without faith, it's impossible to please God because he that cometh to God, this is the rest of that verse, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently Seek him. That's how we please God. By diligently seeking after him. And when I'm seeking him and him alone, okay? And when I seek the Lord, he is then going to reveal to me what that will is for my life today. That's, that's what made Enoch so special before God. Nobody else was like him before him. Nobody has been like him after him. The only other man that was raptured or taken out was the prophet Elijah. At some point, 
He never saw death either. But the point today is this. We want to please God. And he said, if you please me, I will reward you. That's not, a, that's not just an eternal reward. That's also in the here and the now. But we also have to get our minds of what we think that reward is going to be. Right now, I'm, I'm just going to be real honest with you. The Lord is rewarding me right now in this room because you all are here and you're listening to me and these people that are watching online because the things that are coming out of my mouth is not what this lesson talks about. God is rewarding me at this moment because you have no idea unless you've ever taught a Bible study. You have no idea how rewarding it is to sit right here on Sunday mornings. When I leave here. It doesn't matter how much sleep I got last night. When I get up from this table in a little while and we all go our separate ways, I am, I am absolutely energized mm -hmm. because, of, because of being able to be a conduit for the Spirit of the Lord to flow through me and to feed God's people with his word. Yeah. Th th this is not me that you're hearing. This is the spirit of the Lord that's flowing through me talking about this because God only gave me just a little bit. Oh, I have notes. I have, I have three pages of notes, typed notes. They're not mine. We, we have, we have borrowed them from someone else and, uh, but everybody's teaching the same thing, but I'm just going to be real honest with you. This, what I'm saying now is only just a, a preamble or just an introduction to the subject. Because unless Jesus is Lord of every area of my life, this is Lord of our minds today. But, but what about my eyes and my ears? What about my lips and my tongue? What about my, uh, my, the mind that we're going to study today? What am I thinking about? What am I meditating on in my heart? You guys have heard me talk about this on Tuesday nights. What are you looking at? What are you reading what kind of movies are, are, are we watching? What kind of music are we, are, are, what are we listening to that's going in our ears? Because every part of this body is a channel, a, 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 a vessel, if you please, a conduit, if you please, for the spirit of the Lord to live and dwell in me, but not to just live in me, but to come out of me. But he can't come out of me if I've got a whole bunch of other stuff, garbage, that I've put inside. Okay. I, I use the word garbage on purpose because anything that doesn't please God is garbage. junk. It's not, it's not worthy for me to dwell on because if this is a temple of the Holy ghost, right? Mm -hmm. This is what the scriptures teaches. If this is the temple of the Holy ghost, the Bible says he no longer dwells in buildings made with hands. Okay. We don't take, a lamb and go to the tabernacle and offer a sacrifice because they had to go to that building. They had to go to that tent in the wilderness and offer that sacrifice. But that's where God dwelt because that's where the Ark of the Covenant was. That was the symbol of the presence of the Lord. But we don't do that anymore because the presence of the Lord is now living inside of this temple. Right. So it's not the building that we, well, we go to the building because we're supposed to go to the building and we fellowship together in the building because that's proper. The scriptures teach that. But that's not where I go to have fellowship only. My fellowship is with the Lord because he lives in this house. And so my point was this. And if he lives in this house, then it it better be a priority of mine and yours. What we allow to come into this house. He said he would not dwell in an unclean temple. Right. Yes. So when they hallowed the temple before. Uh, well, Solomon's temple. Everybody remembers Solomon's temple. It was beautiful. Gold and silver and all the precious stones and all of the all of the beauty that went into that. But before they ever did anything in that temple. They hallowed that court of that temple. They hallowed the building itself. They offered sacrifices after sacrifice. Thousands of animals were slaughtered for that, that dedication of that temple. Before anything ever went on inside of there, they dedicated that temple with blood. 
And, and then they worshiped. And then the Bible says that the glory cloud came down and filled that house so that the priest could not even go in there. But we don't, that's not how we do it anymore. So what happened when you and I were born again of water and spirit? This temple was hallowed, first of all, with blood. Whose blood? The blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanseth us from all sin. So once they, he hallowed that temple with his blood, that was repentance, asking him to forgive us of all of our sins. Then we were washed in water in baptism and our sins were then washed completely away, remitted as if they never happened. Hello, somebody. That's a good place to say amen, because if your sins have ever been washed away as if you never did them. Hello, somebody. Amen. Right? Yes. Yeah. You know you and I know me. I know what kind of lifestyle I have lived before. I know I haven't always lived. I, I tell the people on Tuesday night, don't look at the button down collar. <laughs> don't, don't look at me as if I've never done anything wrong. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us at ETH on the end of that means it is a continual cleansing. Right. Did anybody get it all right yesterday? I don't see any hands. Um, no, we didn't get it right yesterday. And chances are we're not going to get it right today. But the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth. E-T-H, a continual cleansing. It's present tense. That means it's happening right now from all sin. So before anything ever goes on inside of this temple, he washed it with his own blood, cleansed it from every sin. And then that presence of the Lord came and lived, lives inside of us. And we know when the spirit comes inside of us, because then, according to Acts chapter two, we speak with other tongues as the spirit gives the utterance. Yes. OK, that's how we know. That's the sign. That's the symbol in the Old Testament. The glory cloud of God would come down on the temple. Yes. So now that that cloud of glory has filled our temple. To bring any sin into this temple is to is to make this temple unclean again. And therefore, we don't lose the Holy Ghost, but we lose the fellowship. If I fellowship sin, I can't fellowship God through his spirit at the same time. It's not possible. You can't have your cake and eat it too. I'm sorry. Uh, well, you can here. We have cake and pie in the kitchen right there, but... When it comes to the things of the spirit, you can't have your cake and then have the things of the world, too. I have to fellowship one or the other. It's either or it can't be and or. It's either or. And so Jesus says it's either me or it is the world, because Jesus said, if you if I'm going to live inside of that house. He said, first of all, I'm going to cleanse it from every sin. And then he said, I will come in and fellowship with you and you with me. That then gives him the right to become Lord of our lives, to be Lord of every area of my life, to be Lord of what it is that I am thinking about. Oh, I know what the other one was that I forgot. We're going to talk about the Lord of our minds. Our bodies, our mouth. Whew, Sonny James. We took a little drive to Austin on Friday. And can I just tell you that the people in Austin cannot drive? And I, brother, it, it, I told my wife, it's going to take all the Holy Ghost in the world. It's going to take all the grace of God for me to keep my mouth shut. So he's going to be Lord of our mouth, our eyes and our ears, our marriages, our relationships, our homes and our money. Ooh, brother, we could talk about anything, but don't get on the subject of money. And our jobs. 
Okay, but this week we're going to talk about the mind. I don't know how far we're going to get. Um, we've already been going for 30 minutes. Doesn't seem like 30 minutes, does it? But God has to be Lord of all. God in flesh, the man Christ Jesus, has to be Lord of all. Because if he is not Lord of all, then he is not Lord at all. Amen. And as hard as it for, is for us to accept this, this is how it has to be. Yes. We don't like to be told what to do. No. Thank you, Sister Loretta, for being so honest. <laughs> Every time I say that, she's the first one to say amen. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is we have to get to the place where we are okay with somebody telling us what to do. And yes, many times it is somebody with skin on that has to be that person to do that. But ultimately, who is who is the ultimate authority over everything? The Lord Jesus. The Bible says in Romans, I believe it's chapter 13, that the powers that be, they are ordained by God himself. So even from the president of the United States all the way down to the city manager. God is Lord over every one of those places. So whether you think the election went according to the way we thought it should go or whether or not it went the way you thought it would go is beside the point. The fact is, if we believe that Jesus is Lord of all, and I, I say this often, if we believe that God is sovereign and he rules in the affairs of men, then you have to believe that the election went according to the will of God. The problem is we may not like how it went. And you can complain, and you can fuss, and you can gripe. You might even pray. But it's not going to change the fact that God's will was done. The point is you and I have to be able to accept the will of God for whatever it is and get okay with it. Now, I'm going to say something right here, and I'm, I'll, I'll take whatever comes. But I hope nobody at the Rock Church ever uses the phrase that ends with Brandon concerning our president. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Let's go. Okay. Okay, don't say it. Because it has a very negative connotation. It's vulgar. It has a vulgar meaning to it. I, 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 I almost said it. I better not hear it. Anybody say that that's a member of the Rock Church? There's because God is sovereign. He is Lord over all. And therefore, the will of God is going to be done some way, somehow in the earth. And if he can't find anybody for his will to come through like you, me and you, he's going to find somebody else because the will of God is going to be accomplished in the earth. He can't go back on his word. Everything that God, I'm sorry to get a little passionate about this, but everything that's recorded in this book right here is sovereign. Yes. And if any one, if any one word of this does not come to pass, then God is not who he said he is. And therefore he cannot judge the world according to this. And this book says that if any of it passes away before it's fulfilled, then it will be possible for heaven to pass away. And we know that's not possible. So God is going to fulfill this word no matter what it takes. The point is that you and I want to be a part of this. So giving ourselves to the sovereignty of the living God is a must. 
Letting him be sovereign Lord over my mind, what I think about. The text, let's go ahead and read our text because apparently this is as far as we're going to get today. But 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to we're going to start with verse one, because I want you to see what the Apostle Paul is saying about the and it's the very last verse. Verse 16 is actually where our text comes from. We're going to read one through 16, first Corinthians two, one through 16. And I would urge you at your leisure, read through the books that Paul wrote. Read through Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Read through all of those books and let the Holy Ghost talk to you about what, he, about what he says. Because those books are written to Christians. They're written to believers. It's, it's not, you know, there's only just a few books in the New Testament about how to be saved or how to get saved. But there's more written in the New Testament about how to stay saved than anything. And so this is a book to believers on how to walk with God and let him be Lord. So let's read this. And I will try to keep my comments to a minimum and also be aware of the time. Verse one. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, Declaring unto you the testimony of God. And I'm reading in the King James Version in case you have something else. For I determined not to know anything among you. Save or accept Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. But in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Now he gives you a first glimpse at where we're going. Spirit and power. Why? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Now he's talking about this is godly wisdom to believers. That word perfect is not what we think perfect is, but it means mature. These are people, these are mature Christians that he's talking to now. Because verse 5, he talks about the wisdom of men. That's carnal wisdom. That's, that's human intellect. But in verse 6, he says, we do speak wisdom. Now, this is the wisdom of God among them that are mature believers. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. All right, here we go. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So here, here's, again, another glimpse at what Paul is going to talk to us about. We need the inner working of the spirit. We need it within and we need it active. We need it vibrant. We need it working constantly. Because when God's spirit is in us and we give it the freedom to work, it produces his character. Amen. It produces his wisdom. This is what Paul's talking about. But this cannot happen if the spirit is not being fellowshipped. If I'm fellowshipping other stuff more than I'm fellowshipping God and his word, then that spirit of God cannot work. It's powerful. He's Lord of all, but he can't be Lord of all if I don't give him the freedom to work in my life. This is what Paul is talking about. He said the eyes and the ears, even the heart of man hasn't even figured out the things that God has prepared for us. But verse 10, God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. 
For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Okay, this is King James. But he's saying you know what's going on inside of you because that spirit of man is in you. Okay? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. So if you have the Holy Ghost living inside of you, then God can reveal his things to you. Right. Just as you know your own will, your own self that lives inside of you, you know that nobody else knows what you're thinking except God and you. And so the same principle goes to the spiritual side. There's no way we can know what God is thinking or saying or doing unless he is in us. This is the point. Are y'all seeing this point now? Without the Holy Ghost living inside of us, I can't have the mind of Christ. I just gave it away. Verse 16, I just gave it away. And if I have the mind of Christ, guess what? Now he is Lord of my mind. Yes. Amen. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Notice that's lowercase s, spirit. We have not received the spirit of the world, but we have received capital S, spirit, which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Think about this. Think about what it means to be filled with the spirit. That God himself, the sovereign Lord over all of the earth. Will reveal himself to us by that spirit. You want to know what to think? You want to know how to think you want to have the mind of Christ working inside of you all the time is fellowship the spirit of God that he has put within us. The, the lessons that led up to this weeks back began with talking about justification and sanctification that that entering into the straight gate and narrow way that Jesus taught. Remember those two roads he talked about. One of them was, was, a, was a wide gate and a broad way, which led to where? Death. Death. But there was a straight gate, which King James Version is a narrow, constricted gate and a narrow way, which led to where? Life. Life. And he said, many get in on that wide gate and broad way. But he said that that straight gate and narrow way, he said, there are few that find it. But when we enter that straight gate and walk that narrow way with Jesus Christ, that is the way to life. And so when that entering in of the gate is what I'm talking about. When we enter that gate, that is the moment of salvation. And then walking, that's justification, by the way. Just as if I never sinned. That's what that word means. But then that narrow way is sanctification. That's that constricted walkway. That's being narrow minded. And there's nothing wrong with being narrow minded. The people in the world will fuss at us and they will laugh at us. They will ridicule us for being so narrow minded. Well, you can't do this and you can't do that. Well, anybody remember that uh, concert? A week or so back. Um, and those people are the same ones that ridicule me for having a narrow mind about the things of God and the things of the world. Are, are, are y'all with me right now? Those are the ones that laugh at me for being narrow minded. I'm sorry, but who's the fool now? I, I'm sorry to be so blunt, but OK, I am a fool. I am a fool for Christ. That's what Paul said. Yes. But uh, Father, help me right now. I got to stay on subject, but being narrow minded is a blessing. Yes. It is a blessing. I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm going to make a decision to go to something of that nature, to that, a type of concert like that. I, if, if that's what if that's your thing, fine. 
That's what you want to do. Fine. But when you look at me and you look at other people, other Christians who believe in Jesus Christ and who walk a narrow pathway towards life eternal. They don't laugh at me. Don't ridicule me because I don't follow after those things. Because I, I would rather be able to go to sleep at night with a clear conscience and a sound mind and not have to worry about all of that other stuff that's been pumped into me through my ears and my eyes. This is why. This is why the scriptures teach so clearly. And this is why we at the Rock Church teach so vehemently about what we look at with our eyes and what we listen to with our ears. Because this is the gate to the soul. These very eyes are the gate to my soul. Because those things that I see with my eyes are indelibly printed on my brain. You can't, you can't unsee that. Once you have seen it, you can't unsee it. Once you've heard it, you can't unhear it. Once we speak it, you can't take it back. Right? So what I feed my soul through my eyes and my ears matters about what's going in here and then what comes out of here through my mouth. We've taught this recently as well. Out of the abundance of the heart. What? Jesus said it. The mouth speaks. So if Jesus is Lord of my mind, then what I am feeding my mind with my eyes and with my ears, because my mind and my heart make up my soul. This is who I am. This is the conscious part of the soul. And this is the subconscious part of the soul. So what I'm putting into my soul is what is who I am. Lord, in Jesus name, this is not what I had planned to talk about this morning. But this is what the Holy Ghost wants us to understand. The value of this principle of doctrine of, of guarding our minds with the utmost of care is of absolute necessity. If I want to stay saved. This is what I would really like to talk about on Tuesday nights. And I just might if the Lord will let me. <laughs> because this is everything. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, you don't have to agree with me, but I'm asking you to agree not with me, but I'm asking you to agree with the principle and the doctrine of this word that we're talking about. Amen. I realize we've only read just a few scriptures, but the Holy Ghost has been talking to us for almost an hour Amen. about the things of our spirit, man. And the criticality of, of this whole business of spirit, soul, and body. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm not just the sum of my parts. Yes, You're, I'm not just who you can see with your eyes. Right. Inside of me, there are two other parts that you can't see. That's, by, that's the spirit part of me that makes my heart beat in my chest. And the other part that you can't see is my soul. So I am a three-part being. But my body, this human part of me, is supposed to respond to the inner man and the inner workings of the spirit within me. So if I fellowship the Holy Ghost, guess what? My, my fleshly man is then going to respond to the things of the spirit. But if I'm not fellowshipping the capital S spirit of God living inside of me, then what? I'm fellowshipping my own will. I'm fellowshipping my own carnality. I'm fellowshipping the things of this world because this is what I am part of. We are we are in this world, but we're not of it. Right. But I'm in it. And all it takes is one moment of. A lapse in judgment, a lapse in godly character, and automatically the spirit of the world takes over. It's automatic. You can't not work, do it. If God's spirit is not actively working in us, there is another spirit. And it's the spirit of this world. You, it's either or. And there is no in between. There's no, oh, I'll just be neutral. There is no way you can be neutral because we are in this world. And if I'm not controlled by that spirit world, which is above, 
then I'm controlled by the spirit world, which is all around us right now. Why is Satan called the prince and the power of the air? Because that's his domain. That blue sky that we see out that window right there, that's the domain of Lucifer, Satan himself. And that's where we live underneath that umbrella. So if I'm not covered by the blood of Jesus, if the Holy Spirit, which is above all of that, is not actively working in your life and mine, then guess what? I'm being controlled by another spirit. I would like to tell you that we could be neutral, but it's impossible to be neutral. Okay, let's try to finish this. We're almost at an hour. Brother. Verse 12 again. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, such as this morning, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, that's me, that's this part, I me mean, right here, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Verse 13, again, he says, that that the Holy Ghost teaches us has to be discerned Spiritually, what this Bible says cannot be intellectually gained. You can't read this with a carnal mind and expect it to be revealed to you. Oh, we will we will see things in the scriptures intellectually. But to ever see the deep things of God, the place that the Holy Ghost actually wants to take us can never be seen or never will be revealed to us unless we have the spirit. The Holy Spirit. Because to the natural man, those things, verse 14, are foolishness. Now let's finish and read our text. But he, verse 15, that is spiritual, judgeth all things. Yet he he himself is judged of no man. Verse 16, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Read that last line with me. But we have the mind of Christ. Those who have been filled with the spirit. Those who have been washed in water. In baptism. In Jesus name. Have received this spiritual mind. And this is the mind in which God expects to be able to talk to us to or through so that we can do his will. That's how God speaks to us in our mind. And automatically this this is a very important principle and I will try to stop right here. Every one of you, most of you have a smartphone in your hand right now. If not, you have a computer somewhere in your life that you can access. But that, but that phone has a Google, Yahoo. And you can go to that search and you can type in anything you want to search for in that Google search. And in a moment of time, a split second, that Google search will show up. Whatever is in its memory bank, whatever has been put into that Search engine, it will pop up. I mean, it's almost limitless what you can find. Yes. And you and you could say that 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 search engine is is a a type of the heart, mm-hmm. right? And so I, I hear a voice. I, I hear something come to my mind. I hear this voice. I hear something, and it. It it sounds good and it sounds real. It sounds true. But in order for me to verify if it's true or not, I have to verify it by something else. Right. I have to find a source. I have to find something else to verify. If it's true or not. So when we're told in the scriptures 
Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That is a very real, true statement to us. Because when I hear a voice or I hear a word or I, I get this impression into my mind and, you know, I think, OK, that sounds good. But I need to verify if that's true or not. So I go to my search engine. Right. I have the mind of Christ. Right. I have the spirit of God living inside of me. So I take what I just heard and I Type it into my search engine, which can happen in a moment of time, right? Because I have the Holy Ghost. I've studied God's word. I've read it. I've hid God's word in my heart. So if I hear this thought that comes to my mind, I got to verify it. So I run it through the search. And if you've been praying, if you've been studying God's word, that search should happen just like that. Mm-hmm. It should be instantaneous, just like that Google search. If you have Wi-Fi or you have 5G, Boy, it pops up real quick, doesn't it? But if I have the mind of Christ, that search should only take a moment. I hear this. Yes, that's the Holy Ghost. I verify that very quickly. Why? Because I have him. I have the mind of Christ. I have his spirit living inside. So I verify that. So tell me, tell me how important it is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. How important is it to let his mind be active and working in me? Again, I'm sorry for not looking at the camera as much. I hope that this is for you guys that are watching online that this is okay. But um, it's really cool to have an audience. It's really cool to have people in the room with skin on. It's it's amazing. But how important is it for Jesus to be Lord of our minds? And if I have his mind, he can be Lord of that. But if I I don't have his mind, oh, he may have given it to me when I was filled with his spirit. But again, if I haven't fellowshiped his spirit, guess what? His mind is not working in me. So now I'm using my carnal mind. And where is my carnal mind getting its information from? The spirit of the world. It's It's impossible for it to be any other way. If we are not led by the Holy Spirit, then we are being led by our human spirit or the spirit of this world. And my human spirit is always affected by the spirit that I fellowship the most. In my human spirit, it's already faulty. Let's go back to the Garden of Eden for a second. The human spirit we have is already faulty. Because everybody that came after Adam and Eve, whether they sinned after the same method that Adam and sinned, the Bible says we have sinned. After the similitude of Adam's sin, whether we disobeyed God in that way or not, Adam's sin has passed to every one of us. So automatically we're broken. We come into this world. That child that you brought into this world, JJ, she came into this world needing God. She doesn't know it yet, but in due time, she will understand that. Because you're going to teach her and you're going to show her the things of God. But but we all come into this world the same way. Mm -hmm. And if I never let the spirit of God change me and dictate my life, then my life will always be lived under that umbrella of Adam's sin. And, And what did God do with Adam's sin? He judged it. And not only Adam's sin, but he judged Adam. And that was that will be the end of it all. When God judges mankind, if if he never had a chance to judge my sins, then he's going to judge me. The beauty of grace right now is that he's willing to judge my sin. The scripture teaches that we can send our sins on ahead and he judges our sins. And then when we get there and stand before the judgment It won't be my sins or it won't be me he's judging because my sins will have already been judged. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. So I need his mind and I need it now. Because I'm going to tell you, I don't know if the devil knew what lesson was coming up this week or not. 
But I know this week, as a matter of fact, my mind has been under a severe attack. Wednesday, I finally got some relief. I went and got a, I found me a place to be alone. And I, I, I let the Holy Ghost have its way. And I got victory. Has he tested it? Has he come back and tested it again? Yes, he has. The devil has come back and he's tried to test to see whether or not I would accept what he's bringing. But God gave me a great victory on Wednesday. Yes, someone just said on Facebook, the battle is real. And yes, it is. But when I let the mind of Christ rule. And, and there is a verse of scripture. I don't, I'm not going to take the time. Well, actually, I think it's let the peace of God rule in our heart. I think that's the verse of scripture. But if, I, if, if, if Jesus is Lord of my mind, then guess what? I have peace. Amen. Yes. <laughs> I told my wife, the other, it was Thursday morning, I think. After that Wednesday, when I woke up Thursday morning and I went to pray, I got quiet. I wasn't, I wasn't saying a word. I was, I was just sitting there. I was just being quiet. And it dawned on me. My mind was just as quiet as it is in this room right now. Nothing. It was completely silent. And I tell you what, if you don't know what that feels like, to have that kind of peace between your ears, I can help you with that. I can tell you about my Jesus. He can save you, but he wants to save every part of us. He wants to be Lord of our mind. He wants to be Lord of what I think. And I believe the Lord is letting us up right now. So we're going to pray. And I'm going to ask you to pray with me however you want to pray, quietly, out loud if you want, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to pray. And however this speaks to you, I want you to let the Holy Ghost bring it to you. Okay? Not just hear with your ears, but it needs to go past your ears and get into your spirit, man. Father, in Jesus' name, we have received this word. It has come to us with power. It has come to us with unction. It has come in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And Father, you have spoken to us very, very succinctly and clearly. You've made it very plain to us, Father, that you want to be Lord of everything, including our minds. You've given us the mind of Christ. You've put your spirit within every believer. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, you are giving us an opportunity today to let this word go into our spirit, man. That it will indeed bring life to our mind and spirit. That, Father, when I leave this room, what I have heard with my natural ears, God, it will be transferred to the inner man. It will be engraved, written upon my heart, written upon the, the memory bank of my spiritual mind, that I will be able to recall these words, O oh Lord, that when I am being attacked mentally and emotionally and spiritually, when my thoughts are being attacked, Father, that I will remember this word and I will remember that you are Lord of my mind and I will give myself to the things of the Holy Spirit that God I will do what I'm supposed to do every day and I will put on my armor I'll put on my girdle of truth my breastplate of righteousness the shoes of the gospel of peace oh lord i will i will put on i will take the shield of faith the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit oh lord i will cover myself with your armor oh lord and my mind and my heart will be protected and i can think like you want me to think lord and i can be led by the spirit in the name of Jesus, I pray these things, Lord, upon your people everywhere, but especially those under our authority and covering right 
now that they will hear and receive what the Spirit is saying. God, we live in a broken world. We live in a world where the spirit of iniquity is at work even now. God, the principalities, the powers that be, the rulers of the darkness of this world are at work even now to steal, kill, and to destroy. But in the name of Jesus, we lose this supernatural wisdom and understanding. This supernatural counsel and might, this knowledge and the fear of the Lord upon our hearts and minds to hear and receive this. In the name of Jesus, I loose this supernatural word and authority. In Jesus name, your people now receive this word, Jesus. In your mighty name we pray, giving all glory and honor and praise unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have hope, by whom we have grace and deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. And those of you who are watching with us online, I pray you also prayed with us and you have received this word. And I believe that you will take this, go search the scriptures, find out how the Lord wants to heal our minds. Just use your search function in your Bible apps about searching the mind of Christ, the mind of, and the will of the Lord. Just look up M-I-N-D and find those words and those scriptures and search it and read it and let the Lord be Lord of our minds. We didn't scratch the surface today, but we did go way, way beyond anything I ever thought we would go today with this lesson. Receive it. Walk in it in Jesus name. God bless you all. Bishop, Sister Smith, be safe on your journey. Enjoy this time away, but also receive as the spirit leads and feeds you while you are there. The Rock Church. God bless you all. I love you. Remember our announcements. We'll be back with you tonight on Facebook Live at 6 p.m. God bless you. Love you all. In Jesus' name, amen.